Can you explain the difference between the level of manipulation between Bob Seven and Mr. Girl? I find that show fascinating. Rigid things tend to be brittle because if you bend it even a little bit, it breaks. And I think that's kind of what's happened to Max's worldview over and over and over and over and over again. There's very so little- Mr. Girl has wheeled out his freak again. He'll usually let Shaylin out of the cage to come speak on streams whenever he needs an optics win. But somehow, this time, he managed to turn that into an even worse optical loss. Very impressive. Shaylin says, Destiny has claimed that I am Max's employee and that I am financially dependent on him. Both are false. While Max does hire me for occasional contract work, it is not a primary source of income for me. And the slave driver drawing was a freebie. So what is Shaylin's job? I don't believe it. If you look at all of her stuff online, everything is about Max. Her Instagram, her Twitter, like all of her art, all of her work, it's all about Max. I don't think she has a job. Off this tweet, we pretty much just have to take her at her word. I mean, we can't prove where the majority of her income is from unless there's a clip out there of her saying she only works for Max or something like that. However, Max manages to turn this into a massive L when, after Destiny's primary abuse victim response to bring up the Mr. Girl had called Destiny his employer. Courtney is not a primary abuse victim. She's like a tertiary or secondary abuse victim. I've abused way more people before Courtney. Max responds, provide a quote and timestamp of me saying Destiny was my employer. Delete your tweet or I'll block you. So Mr. Girl is demanding that Courtney delete her tweet, maybe because he thinks it's slanderous somehow, even though it's just asking a question or it's just personally offensive to him to be asked a quest statement that he'll block her over it. I don't know, but he goes on to say, I said that Destiny has power over his orbiters somewhat like a boss. Destiny didn't say that Shaylin is like my employee. He said that she is my employee. Now this is where it gets interesting because he didn't actually say Destiny had power over orbiters like a boss. There are clips of him out there saying Destiny is his boss, just like he indignantly asked for proof of. Steven okay. in some ways is our boss. What yeah. the f Speak for yourself. He, no, he can't okay. do shit. Steven is our boss and he's also our friend, but he's our boss. And that creates a lot of weird social dynamics. Now, obviously the two situations aren't even comparable at all because Max is literally paying commissions to Shaylin for her work, meaning he literally is her boss at some points, as yep. he said here in a Reddit thread. But Destiny doesn't actually pay orders directly as far as anyone knows, and orders are under no obligation to stick around if they don't want to. No con- I evaluate her work only when I'm paying her for it as her boss. <laughs> I didn't even know he said that, <laughs> holy shit. Yikes, fam. We got a big, ooh, we got a big, ooh, yikes there. Contracts have been signed. No agreements for stream time have been made. Embarrassingly, Max responds to this clip with, thank you. I did not mean it literally. And I definitely didn't mean employer, but yes, I did say that. Which makes it super fucking weird because they live in the same household, but their incomes are obviously separate since he's literally paying her for her work. Yeah, I know, Brandon. Like I said, <laughs> that's an abusive setting. No shit. I bet that one thing that I wonder because Shannon kind of comes off like this, but I could be wrong, is when Max says that she's, he's not her primary source of income, I wonder if she has rich parents that give her money. And so she gets like a little bit from them when she needs it. And that's why he's saying um, he's not her primary means of survival or whatever. If you do commissions or other art, would she necessarily be posting it to her socials? I could be wrong. I don't know enough about the art world, but every single artist I've ever worked with, every single person that's ever done anything like that ever in my entire life, I've always seen them post their portfolio on Instagram or there's another weird art site. I don't know what it's called, but I've, I've always seen artists because you have to, because when people are like, oh, like, um, do you want to do work for me? Yeah, here's my portfolio. You always have a public facing portfolio. Well, from what I've seen, I've always seen artists that I've worked with always have a ton of, pu oh, DeviantArt or ArtStation. Yeah, I think ArtStation is what I've seen. People always, or they'll have their own websites. Um, people will always have their public facing portfolios. I don't think she has one, right? Feels like every single thing she's done is with Max. But hey, listen, they could always just post one and prove me wrong, so. To be fair, is her Twitter not a portfolio? Yeah, but her Twitter is just all Max pictures, right? What other work does she get commissioned for? Do you feel like the deeper Mr. Girl goes down this vengeance path, he becomes more clumsy with his communication, where he's more often finding himself with his foot in his mouth? He wasn't his bad, okay. <sighs> one of, this is like a thing that I try to do. I'm not perfect. You should try to do this, okay? When I say you should be like free of ideology or try to be careful with the lenses that you view society through, the problem is that when you go down a certain path, when, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? If you go down a certain path and you view the world in a certain way, it's easy to start to bend and contort every single thing into your particular framework to try to make everything look that way, right? If you ask a feminist why, um, you know, why 9-11 happened, you know, they'll say toxic masculinity. That might actually be a quote from fucking, 
maybe was it Brianna Wu who said that a long time ago about Elliot Rogers? Or might have been Anita Sarkeesian. Like like in the in in the patriarchy, everything is the fault of toxic masculinity, right? Or if you're a racist, everything is the fault of immigrants. Or if you're anti-Semitic or a Nazi, everything is the fault of Jews, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's always it's always that particular thing. The problem with Max is he's gone down this hyper narcissistic road where he's a savior, I'm a sex abuser. He's like protecting and saving and helping all these women around him, right? He, he, Shailen even drew the picture of her protecting, um, you know, her Max and, and, and his daughter Lav. Um, he's got this very rigid, and it is very rigid, but brittle um, way of viewing the world, and everything has to be compressed down into it. But the problem is that the the less the, the, the less descriptive or the less accurate your framework is, the more you're gonna either okay, fuck up or go make up. Um, the more you're gonna fuck up or the more, you know, you're just gonna be completely and totally wrong about things, which is what Mr. Girl is running into, right? Like, sh he's not abusive towards Shaylin, so he, and he can't be Shaylin's boss because I'm people's bosses and that makes me abusive, right? Those two facts can't exist together, so there's a contradiction there. So he'll just say like, oh, well, this didn't happen. But then when it comes out, oh, well, hold on, this did happen, he's gotta like find a way to reshuffle things into his framework, right? Brittle, interesting word. Well, rigid things tend to be brittle because if you bend it even a little bit, it breaks. And I think that's kind of what's happened to Max's worldview over and over and over and over and over again. There's very little flexibility here when I'm a serial racist that abuses young, vulnerable women on my stream. And when he's like a savior that's protecting all the women around him and he's just trying to have honest and earn, um, honest conversations where he's being vulnerable but not abusive, right? She has a link to commissions on a Patreon, but all the art shown is still her and Max. Yeah. Can you explain the difference between the level of manipulation between Bob Seven and Mr. Girl? I find that shit fascinating. Bob Seven, I think, fancied himself like a mini little manipulator who was just trying to get things that he wanted on his side. But Bob Seven, I don't think, was like a crazy narcissist. Like he was just like a he was like a smarter version of Denim's, I guess. Like I don't think Denim's is a crazy narcissist. Max is genuinely insane. Like I don't think Bob Seven. If you were to ask Bob Seven, like, do you fancy yourself as like the protector of all like the innocent and poor women around you? Are you like a savior against? I don't think he'd ever say that. He'd never be like, oh yeah, for sure. Like, he'd be like, no, fuck no. Like if you honestly, I was like, no, I'm gonna fuck this guy over because I don't like this dude or whatever. Where that dude is me, right? I think that was Bob Seven. Max genuinely, I again, and I could be wrong. You know, who knows? Maybe I'll be wrong in the future, and it's possible. But like, I genuinely do believe that Max thinks he's on this like righteous path um, where he's doing the thing that is correct and he really is like saving all these people around him. Like I think he genuinely does believe that. But again, um, personality disorder, right? Like, I mean, like it's part of who he is. It's his character. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we've already watched this on stream like twice, but this fits like, it fits so well. It just fits so well. So for a while, I almost wonder if he's like doing some big like reality TV show where he's like trying to use this as like a blueprint. I think I don't make decisions in the same way sometimes, but a lot of other okay. people seem to. So for a while, I think it led me to be a little bit, um, I, I people acted in ways that I didn't expect. It's like, well, hold on, how can this person fuck me over? Like I haven't done anything like that fucked up to her. How can a person do this? This is like really weird to me. I feel like I've done so much. But I think what I've kind of learned recently is when somebody's fucking somebody over, the reason there aren't any bad feelings that they have to deal with because in everybody else's mind, they've always convinced themselves that they're in the right for doing so. So they don't actually have to deal with those types of bad feelings because they're always the hero of their own story and they always have good justification for the reasons they're acting. So I think it's a little bit of a waste of time for me to try to guess like, okay, well, objectively, I've done like the decent amount of shit for you. How the fuck can you do this to me? Because in their mind, they've already convinced themselves, well, Destiny's a horrible person. He's done this horrible shit. Like Wait, I can do this and it's actually okay. Can, mm -hmm. can you give me a real life example of somebody who you think? has no qualms. So about Vosh is somebody who only exists on the internet because of me, because I'm willing to talk to smaller creators, because I was willing to plug him as much as I could early on, because I gave him a big presence in my chat. He was involved in a sexual harassment scandal that I covered up for him, kind of. I deleted the video off my YouTube channel. I, I would always tell him like, <laughs> hey, like, like I did a lot of stuff to help him early on. That would yeah. be somebody that in my mind, if I was in his position, I feel like I would always have a debt there. There's no possible way that I could like turn my back on this other person and be like, you're a horrible piece of shit or whatever. Um, okay. But he did, um, because there was more to gain publicly. But I think in his mind, I don't think he's thinking like, oh God, like, you know, me and Destiny, we were kind of friends, we had this, and I this is gonna hurt a lot. I think in his mind, he's already thought like, okay, Destiny is actually an evil, horrible person. I don't even think he likes me at all. I think he's actually like an evil fuck and I need to do this because it's the right thing to do. So I might be trying to project onto him some emotional state that he doesn't have because from his point of view, he's already convinced himself that he's correct in everything that he's doing. So that'd be like one out of, I can give you like half a dozen other real life examples of people acting. I, I, I might want a couple, but do you think, um, you think most people are like Vosh in that way? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a pretty normal human thing to do. We think of ourselves as like a good person usually. Also, to be clear, because when we have these conversations, I'm talking about how other people help me. I'm not a perfect person either. Like, I've made mistakes and I've done bad things to people too. So, I mean, like, it's not like, yeah, I'm not saying that, like, I'm a perfect person. Sure, sure. Whatever. Yeah, what a wild. Whatever. I have to get the caveat for the audience. Yeah. I understand. Vosh, um, I feel like there's some selection bias where. What a wild, <clears throat> what a wild thing to say. Jesus.